Well, hello everyone. So last time we talked about the animated series Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, which aired on Saturday mornings in 1990 and 1991. But did you know there was also a short-lived live-action TV series that aired in 1992? Probably not, because I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who watched it. But yes, this actually happened. The live-action show kept the same title as the cartoon, and also the same actors who voiced Bill and Ted in Season 2, Evan Richards and Christopher Kennedy. And I believe Season 2 of the cartoon and the live-action show were produced around the same time, but they held off on putting this on the air, I think because they wanted to wait until Bill and Ted's bogus journey had turned a profit. So despite being filmed in 1991, it aired in 1992, and this created some confusion as to when exactly the show was supposed to take place. Rufus, who is now played by Rick Overton, comes from the future of San Dimas in the year 2692, and if we're following the exact same 700-year gap that we seem to be following in the previous movies and TV shows, that would suggest 1992 is when the show takes place. But there are still bits of dialogue here and there that would suggest it actually takes place in 91. But really, neither year makes sense, because the show still acts like it's taking place in the 80s. Bill and Ted are still wearing the exact same clothes and listening to the same music. The girls at their high school still have that big 80s hair. Like... Even Bill and Ted's bogus journey realized, hey, a few years have passed, it's not the 80s anymore. The show didn't last very long, only seven episodes aired on Fox before they canceled it, and I don't know if you guys appreciate just how bad you had to be to get canceled by Fox in the early 90s, but yeah, you had to be pretty crappy. This show has never been released on home video in any format to my knowledge, so in order to re-watch it, I had to resort to... <clears throat> alternate means. I kind of remember liking it as a kid, but that may just have been because I was young and stupid and had no taste and I was just happy to see Bill and Ted in any format. Watching it again as an adult? It... Ugh. Oh, it does not hold up. No. 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 Much like Season 2 of the animated series, Richards and Kennedy are not really playing Bill and Ted, they're just doing bad Bill and Ted impressions. Bill and Ted in the movies felt like actual, real people. Bill and Ted in the TV show feel like two guys doing a comedy skit. And unfortunately, they're doing the same skit over and over and over. Overton as Rufus was fine, I suppose, although... Apparently he's a wizard now. There's one episode that suggests he has, like, the ability to control people's minds, which is new. The special effects were decent for a TV show, probably the best thing about the show, really. Uh, although they did recycle circuits of time footage from the movies. But the show also seemed to ignore a few elements from the movies. The princesses are nowhere to be found, never even mentioned. If you'll recall, in Bogus Journey, Missy had divorced Bill's dad and married Ted's dad. In the show, she's still married to Bill's dad. And they somehow managed to make it even cringier than it was before, because they mentioned she is only about six months out of high school. Ew. But anyway... When I rewatched this series, for the first time ever, I got to watch the unaired pilot episode, which I had heard about but never actually seen. And I'm not even sure if it was supposed to air on TV. It's only about 18 minutes long, which is a few minutes too short for a 30-minute television show with commercial breaks. Also, there's no space for commercial breaks. So it's never aired on TV in any form, apart from a couple of clips that ended up in the opening credits. I also noticed the guy who played Ted in the pilot had a very different hairstyle compared to what Keanu had in the movie. Like, they gave him a side part and no bangs, and it really didn't look right. But by the time the show actually made it to air, they did give him much better Ted hair. And one of the weird things I noticed about this show right away is it had a religious angle for some reason. Like, Bill and Ted's music wasn't just responsible for the foundation of this futuristic utopia. There was basically like a cult that formed around them. The very first thing we see in the pilot is the Church of Bill and Ted which Rufus apparently preaches at. And this continues later on in the season in episodes that actually did air. The three most important people in the world in the future are now referred to as the Holy Ones. I have no idea what's going on here, but I don't like it. 
The pilot episode continued with the concept from season two of the cartoon, where the phone booth does not just travel through time, it can also travel into other things. And in fact, in the pilot, Bill and Ted end up going into an old black and white comic book. And they accidentally bring one of the characters back to the real world with them, and the first thing she notices is that the world is suddenly three-dimensional, which didn't make a whole lot of sense because the world still looked pretty three-dimensional when they were inside the comic. The only actual difference was it was in black and white. But this did lead to one funny line where the woman from the comic is like, wow, I've never been able to see my back and my front at the same time. And Ted says, you're missing out. And oddly enough, the pilot actually ends on a cliffhanger, complete with to be continued, but never actually was continued. So what happened to that black and white girl? I guess we'll never know. For most of the episodes that actually aired, they did use the booth for time traveling. There was only one other episode where they used it for something else, and that was to go inside a television soap opera. I guess Missy did not like the direction her favorite soap opera was going in, which somehow had a negative impact on her and Mr. Preston's love life, which totally went over my head when I was a kid, of course. And you know, if your relationship can be ruined by a TV show, it probably wasn't that strong to begin with. Also, you married a man twice your age, what the fuck is wrong with you? And somehow Bill and Ted were able to enter the show and become the long-lost sons of one of the characters and manage to reshape the plot. How does that work? I have no idea, but they did it in the cartoon, so at least we had a precedent. And at least the episode had a couple of funny moments where they're making fun of television and soap opera tropes. Like, there's a scene where they get kidnapped and they're sitting in the backseat of a car, and Bill's like, where are we, Ted? And Ted says, we're in a car, but... I don't think we're going anywhere. But apart from the pilot and as the dude turns, and yes, that's really what they called that episode, everything else deals with traveling back in time and meeting various historical figures. Some of which may not have actually been real people. In the very first episode, they go back and meet King Arthur when he pulls the sword from the stone. Now, it's possible King Arthur was based on a real person, but obviously the legend surrounding him with the sword and the stone and the Lady of the Lake and all that is just a story. And Arthur was played by Diedrich Bader, of all people. That was an interesting choice. They meet Elvis Presley in an episode that was kind of anemic on plot, but made up for it with an extended musical number. There's one where they meet Casanova, which was largely forgettable. There was one where they went back in time and met Ted's parents when they were kids and found out Ted's dad was a hippie, although turns out he was never really a hippie, he was just acting like one to get laid, and once he found himself a nice conservative girl, he dropped the charade. And boy, did that episode not work. Some of the dialogue was just really bad. Like, after Ted's father drops the hippie charade and reveals who he's always been, there's a line where he says, I want to grow up and yell at my kids so they know that I love them. Even conservative kids don't talk like this. What is wrong with you? Also, the actors who played the adults in 1991, or 92, whatever, played the same characters as children from, like, 30 years prior. Boy, did that not work. You can dress that actor up like a hippie and put him in a wig if you want. He still looks like a middle-aged man cosplaying as a hippie. There were two more episodes that really stood out to me, and not for good reasons. One was an episode where they went back in time and met Albert Einstein. This was the last episode that aired, and in this episode they are struggling to understand Einstein's theory of relativity, so they decide to go back in time and get some help from Einstein himself. And after going through this weird plot where Einstein decided to become a stand-up comedian, but they convinced him not to do so and become a scientist instead, they come back to the present day and they teach the class exactly what Einstein taught them about his theory. And the biggest problem with this episode is it's basically just a rehash of the first movie, just on a smaller scale. Seven episodes in, not counting the pilot, and they're already out of ideas. No wonder they got cancelled. And the other episode that stuck out to me, mainly because it was just, I think, the biggest wasted potential for this show, was the episode, It's a Totally Wonderful Life. In this episode, Rufus accidentally splits up Bill and Ted because of some dream he had about Chicken Kiev. Just go with it. And when he comes back to his own time, he finds out it has been transformed into a dystopian society. And what they did here was actually kind of funny. Basically, the dystopian future is based on a polka band, 
and there is an underground heavy metal resistance movement, which actually was kind of clever. So Rufus tries to go back and fix his mistake, but the booth gets damaged in the process, and he ends up in 1996, which is five years later. Or four years later, whatever. And after having been separated, Bill and Ted have gone on to their own careers and have kind of turned into douchebags, but they're also very successful, so kind of getting some mixed messages here, and this is where this episode really dropped the ball. Bill has apparently taken over the hardware store that he and Ted used to work at and is working on expanding the chain. And the show does a pretty good job of making him look like an abusive asshole. And then there's Ted, who has apparently followed in his father's footsteps and become a police officer. Ted is now working with internal affairs and busting corrupt cops, and the show makes him out to be the bad guy. What? Like, there's this other cop that's yelling at him and saying, hey, he slipped up once, so what? He's got a family to feed. And it's making it very clear that we are supposed to be rooting against what Ted is doing, and just, uh, why? You practically shoved the money in his pocket, Logan. I went back and watched that scene, and no, no he didn't. Ted was totally in the right here. Obviously, this would be incredibly tone-deaf today, but even back then... This was 1992. This episode aired just a few months after Rodney King. Read the room. That's what really pissed me off about this episode. They had a great idea, but they just completely bungled the execution. Overall, I guess I can't feel too bad about rewatching this show because there's only eight episodes counting the pilot, so I didn't waste too much time, but still, it was not good. It had a few funny moments here and there, but mostly it just sucked. I honestly cannot recommend it except for completionists. And even then, there's better things you can do with your time. And that's all I have to say about Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. Till next time, take care.